2018 for Williams was supposed to be an improvement, and by quite a long way it has not. And in 2018, Toro Rosso were expected to struggle, but Toro Rosso and Honda have proved a lot of people wrong. So in this video, I will analyse how Williams and Toro Rosso's 2018 season has gone so far, what their best and worst races are so far of 2018, and what they can improve upon. With Paddy Lowe finally designing a Williams car, much was expected for 2018. But oh boy, they got a massive reality check in pre-season. With the car absolutely miles off the pace, and looking even more difficult to handle than the 2017 Williams. Somehow with a better designer, Williams had gone backwards. And at the first race, it was clear to see that. As Williams not only struggled for pace, but also for reliability with Sergio Sorokin retiring from the race and Lance Stroll finishing quite low down. Times were tough at Williams, and it was not going to get any better in Bahrain, as Williams by far had the worst car on the grid, as they qualified right at the back and finished right at the back, as Williams in Bahrain were the only team not to improve on their 2017 lap time. Clear evidence that they did not improve at all over the winter, but in Shanghai they were a bit better than they were in Bahrain, as at this race they weren't quite at the back, but they would still come away pointless from the Chinese Grand Prix, despite Lance Stroll making a fantastic start to that race. Then came Baku, their only high of 2018 so far, as the two Williamses only just missed out on Q3 and qualifying, and with Lance Stroll scored their only points so far off the season, a much needed morale boost. And they could have had two cars in the points if Sergio Sorokin had not retired on the first lap. And probably should have been with the pace he had during the weekend. Were Williams finally starting to improve? Nope, they weren't. Because at the Spanish Grand Prix they were way off the pace. As the car was quite frankly undrivable. With Lance Stroll having multiple crashes during the weekend. And none of Williams' upgrades actually worked. Monaco though brought a slight surprise with Sergio Sorokin very impressively qualifying up in 13th. And going into the Grand Prix, Williams were hoping maybe for some points, but they completely destroyed any chance before the race even started, as their mechanics were not off the grid three minutes before the race started, which by the rule book is not allowed. What a poor and silly mistake. And with Lance Stroll getting multiple punctures that destroyed Williams' hopes of anything good, then for Williams came a very rough period of the season. In Canada, there was no pace to be seen, with Lance Stroll at his home race retiring on the first lap, after a massive crash with Brendan Hartley. In France, again, no pace, as Lance Stroll retired from the race with a puncture, and Sergei Sorokin got a penalty for being too slow under the safety car. That just describes Williams' season. There was also no pace whatsoever at the Austrian Grand Prix, qualifying low down and finishing low down as usual. Then at Silverstone, they brought some upgrades. Did they work? Hell no. It resulted in the car becoming again undrivable, ending another embarrassing race for the team. But in Germany, there was a slight improvement in terms of pace, with Sergei Sorokin qualifying up in P12. But for Williams as ever, the race did not go to plan, as during the rain and the safety car period, both cars retired. Then in Hungary, their pace was not too bad with Lance Stroll, where in qualifying he managed to get out of Q1. But again in the race, the two Williamses would end up at the back, ending what has been a miserable first half of 2018. And I think it's safe to say this team is in a crisis, as they are last in the Constructors' Championship with only four points. They have no top five finishes and have only finished in the points on one occasion. Simply not good enough. And neither has it been from Lance Stroll. In the Drivers' Championship, he is 18th with again 4 points. He has no top 5 finishes, but did get the team's only points finish in Baku. And for Sergio Sorokin, he's not been as bad as I thought he would be. Even though he is last in the Drivers' Championship with no points. And of course, no top 5 finishes or points finishes. But those stats do not tell the entire story. Of course, Williams' best race has to be Baku because that's the only place where they've actually scored points, and the only track they've actually looked quite quick, and this is probably going to be their only points finish of 2018. So yep, that is their best race. Their worst race though for me is Monaco, 
because at a track they were not expected to go well at, they were actually quick, but then completely threw it away with a pathetic mistake. How was a team with this much experience making mistakes like that? I will never know. And because of how they destroyed Sergei Sorokin's race, that has to be their worst race so far. Now for the drivers, let's start off with Lance Stroll. There has been a couple races where Lance has done well, for example, Baku. But this season, for me, he has not been good enough. And I actually think Sergei Sorokin has been better. The only thing that Stroll has over Sorokin is that he finished in the points in Baku. And if you look at qualifying, Sorokin has been better. And I have not seen any improvement compared to 2017. But for Sorokin, I've actually been quite impressed. I did not think this season he would be any good. And even though he has not scored any points, I think he's been decent. Qualifying 13th in Monaco and 12th at Hockenheim. Those are some very good qualifying results. And remember, we're starting right next to Lance Stroll in Baku. But unfortunately, he crashed on the first lap. And for me, again, Sorokin has been better than Stroll. There's not too much to say about Williams. Their car is truly abysmal. And they have to now focus on 2019. Coming into 2018, Toro Rosso and Honda were not expected to be good because of just how poor Honda were in 2017. But in pre-season, they turned out to be quite a surprise, as after the eight days of testing, the Honda power unit was looking reliable, with the Toro Rosso car also looking good. Would they go on to start the season well in Australia? They were not, as all weekend at the first race, they struggled for pace, and in the race were Pierre Gasly also reliability. Toro Rosso and Honda came crashing back down to earth, but not for long, because in Bahrain they came away with an amazing result, as Pierre Gasly in qualifying qualified P6, and then finished in 4th in the Grand Prix. Absolutely no one saw this coming, and is still so far one of the biggest surprises of 2018. Maybe now finally Honda were making some serious progress, but came crashing back down to earth again in Shanghai where all of the good pace from Bahrain disappeared, as in qualifying they finished very low down, and then in the race the two drivers made contact, meaning for Toro Rosso the Chinese Grand Prix was a disaster, as the crash was caused over a confusion with team orders, and in Baku the relationship between the two teammates got even worse, as Brendan Hartley with Pierre Gasly in qualifying almost caused a massive crash, which could have been horrific. But despite that, Hartley in the race would come away with his first ever points finish, capitalising on others' mistakes. But in that same race, Gasly had another near miss, this time with Kevin Magnussen, and he was very lucky to come away unhurt. But the next race for Brendan Hartley would be very tough, as in practice 3 he had a massive accident, which went on to destroy his race weekend. And with Pierre Gasly it was not much better. Even though in qualifying he finished in P12, he went on to crash on the first lap, all due to Roman Grosjean's spinning car. In Monaco though, Gasly was back in the points, as after having a good qualifying, he finished in P7 in the Grand Prix. A very impressive drive, finishing ahead of Hülkenberg and Verstappen. His teammate though would not finish the race, as he was involved in a big crash with Charles Leclerc. Hartley's torrid season continued and would not get any better in Canada, having another huge crash this time with Lance Stroll, as his race was all over in a matter of corners. Gasly though would have a decent race after starting from the back, finishing in P11. At Gasly's home race though it would not go well, as qualifying was not great at all, and then crashed on the first lap with Esteban Ocon, and with Hartley finishing low down it was another pointless race for the team. In Austria though things were looking a bit better, as in qualifying, Pierre Gasly qualified in 12th and for a very long time in the race was running in the points. But very quickly that fell away. As Fernando Alonso, Charles Leclerc and Marcus Ericsson would pass him late on to put him outside of the points. A missed opportunity there for Toro Rosso. As Hartley again retired from the race. With once again a reliability issue. And his bad run of results continued at Silverstone. As in third practice he had a massive crash preventing him from taking part in qualifying and didn't even get the chance to race. Meanwhile, on track for Pierre Gasly, he did have a good race, but got a penalty after the race, relegating him down to 13th, after some contact with Sergio Perez in the final laps. And I have to say, I think that was quite unfair, as it wasn't exactly a major amount of contact, 
In terms of pace though in Germany, Toro Rosso looked awful, with both cars going out in Q1. But they would still score points in the race, as Brendan Hartley got his second points finish of 2018. And a very deserved one because of his bad luck, as he capitalised well on the wet conditions and also the safety car. And then in Budapest, Toro Rosso ended the first half of 2018 very well. Where in the wet qualifying, they qualified P6 and P8. And with Pierre Gasly went on to finish in 6th, in a drive reminiscent of Bahrain. But Hartley missed out on points in 11th. But it was still a good way for Toro Rosso to head into the summer break. In a season that has been decent so far. As in the Constructors' Championship, they're in 8th place of 28 points with one top five finish which came in Bahrain and five points finishes. That is definitely better than what I was expecting. And Pierre Gasly has also had a decent season. He is 13th in the Drivers' Championship with 26 points. He has the team's one top five finish in Bahrain and has three points finishes. But for Brendan it's not been great, as he is 19th in the Drivers' Championship with only two points. He has no top five finishes but does have two points finishes. Now of course their best race has to be Bahrain, because the pace they had there was simply stunning. Nobody, not even Toro Rosso or Honda thought they were going to be that quick. And to this day it's still a shock they were so quick. And to be at least with Pierre Gasly the best of the rest in Bahrain, that has to be their best race so far. What a job they did. The worst race though for me is the next race in Shanghai. Not only because the speed of their car was poor, but because their drivers collided in a massive miscommunication and they could have for sure dealt with that better. But of course now is all forgotten. Now for the drivers, let's start off with Pierre Gasly. At the races where he's finished in the points, he has been good and also in Austria where he did not finish in the points. But I am still not convinced by him because in my view, he has been inconsistent. He'll go and have a good race and then immediately have a bad race. And that happens way too much. And he must improve this side of his driving. Especially if he wants to drive with Max Verstappen at Red Bull in 2019. But Brendan Hartley for me has not been good enough. I will admit he has had a lot of bad luck. You cannot doubt that at all. But if you compare him to Pierre Gasly in terms of qualifying pace there's no debate. Gasly is way better. And Hartley has simply not been close enough to him. And even though in the previous couple races he has improved, I do not see him staying at Toro Rosso for 2019. I just do not see it. Now on Toro Rosso's side, there's nothing really to improve. The improvement needs to come from Honda. If they improve the power unit enough, they may be able to hold off Sauber for 8th. It's going to be hard, but it is possible. Williams though have so many problems. And surely have to focus now on 2019. The 2018 car has been a disaster. Surely 2019 will not be as bad. But I really fear it might be. So going forward for these two teams it is going to be tough. But who knows surprises may still happen. But anyway guys that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys I will be back tomorrow with a mid-season review of Formula 2. Also don't forget to join the Chaz HDF1 Discord server. Link to that is in the description also with my Twitter. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what have you thought of Williams' and Toro Rosso's season so far. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time it's been me Chazzer HD, goodbye.